are going to cross then uh, live to Tunis, speak to our correspondent, uh, Andrew Hillier, who joins us from there. I mean, Andy, it's fairly obvious, isn't it, that this will uh, pass, it will go through. Yeah, that's right, Stuart. I mean, it's, it's a moment of uh, reckoning, uh, really, uh, for Tunisia. Just over a quarter of voters uh, registered to vote actually uh, cast uh, their ballots, a fairly uh, low uh, turnout figure. Despite that, we, uh, we saw scenes of jubilation in the streets of uh, uh, central Tunis. Yesterday, we heard uh, supporters of President uh, Kais Syed uh, beeping their car horns late into the night. They reckon they've easily got this, uh, got, got, got this won, but, uh, of course... Um, the, op the opposition say that uh, with such low turnout, of course, that calls into question the legitimacy of this uh, constitutional uh, referendum. Uh, we visited several uh, polling stations yesterday and time and time again, we, we heard the same thing from those who had turned out to vote. They came to vote yes, because they wanted to do away with the old political system. Now, I'd like to bring into the discussion Afefa Daoud. You are, a, uh, you are the president of uh, Etakatol's National Council, and uh, you're part of uh, several parties and groups who have been uh, calling for a, a boycott of the referendum. Now, I just want to start with a simple question. Given what happened yesterday, was it the right move to call for a boycott? Uh, absolutely. Uh, what we saw is 75% of the population did not go uh, uh, to, the, uh, uh, to the polls yesterday. Barely uh, over 25% participated and only 23% uh, uh, agreed to this constitution. It's cringingly low. As, a, as rate, and it shows it's not legitimate. I, I, I want to get back to what uh, Professor Qais Sayed, when he was completely independent and not sitting in, uh, in the palace in Carthage, uh, that uh, a referendum couldn't be legitimate only if there is a high rate of participation. He also said that it's, uh, it's, uh, it's a way in the Arab world to uh, set dictatorship. And what happened yesterday, uh, it has a strong reminder, a sad reminder of 2002 referendum. It's 20 years ago, and Ben Ali put uh, in place a referendum with also a very high rate of uh, uh, agreement, yes, to change of, uh, of constitution 20 years ago, saying I... that he can stay president for life. This is what we saw yesterday. And, and, and the, you know, uh, him being uh, in front of uh, uh, the police uh, department, I would say, as always, it's the only department he, he visits. It's, it's a sad reminder of Ben Ali era. I, I would like to just, uh, one point I think, that uh, one thing that many voters said to us yesterday in, in, in the polling stations we went to in working class neighbourhoods and in affluent neighbourhoods uh, was that the, the problem they have with the opposition is that they're so divided. There's no vision, that there's no one actually presenting a real alternative to what President Kais Syed has done. How do you react to that kind of uh, comment? I think uh, uh, the, the opposition have to listen to that, and we say that even inside the opposition, that uh, uh, in, in 10 years the, uh, the, the politics stayed with, uh, it's just a fight between political parties. And uh, a new generation in politics said that it's wrong, and we are still saying it and fighting inside it to build a new alternative. It's not being uh, divided, the problem, is being and presenting a new alternative. So the offer is there and we presented uh, as, as, as uh, young leaders uh, different uh, reforms and the uh, new vision of the economy and the social reforms. However, those reforms are not also heard because what we saw in the last year when uh, Qais Said is now uh, ruling as a king, that even the access to the media and the, the public um, debate does not exist. We only hear Qais Said, and and this is what we saw yesterday. If you had followed a little bit in the uh, in the state media, we had Qais Said talking uh, about 20 minutes, calling the people to vote where it's he should be silent. But this is the thing. This is uh, what, what, again. This is what voters are telling us: is that yes, they they do fear a return to uh, authoritarian rule, but they say that anything but the last 10 years, where basically there's been no economic growth and just constant political infighting in Parliament. 
Uh, in, in the last te 10 years, we had two years when the infighting was good because it brought us a constitution which was a very uh, progressive constitution and a constitution which gives right to even uh, the, 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 all the people who were left behind uh, uh, during the dictatorship. Uh, however, uh, after that, people voted for uh, for uh, for Nide. people voted for Nahda and that's democracy and they got what they voted for that's important and the infighting uh, was yes not uh, uh, didn't bring a good result however the, uh, the return to the past return to the dictatorship and more than the dictatorship did they really read the constitution which bring us, you know, Sharia, almost Sharia law in, in the constitution? Do we, even if they believe that Qais Saeed is a great guy and he's clean and uh, he's a non, uh, uh, you know, dictator, when he leaves, do they believe that that constitution, when another person and the head of the state is a good thing for the country is it's you know when you read the constitution there is no counter power to the power of the president he can stay in uh, uh, you know in place for forever Afif Daoud, uh, you are the uh, president of uh, Etakatol's National Council a center left party here in Tunisia thank you very much for thank your you. time so um, we're still uh, waiting to hear uh, official results uh, expecting to get those uh, later today and of course that's obviously going to have a big effect on uh, what happens here uh, in the days and uh, weeks to come.